Wait, yeah. wait. How big was this? Just $12 million. Holy 12 million. smokes. That's insane. Yeah. She was going to divorce him over it. And now she prays for us all the time. <laughs> nice. They live in the beautiful house that they purchased with the money they got from the deal with Titans of CNC. First thought in my head was like, oh, did he, should he have gone that big? What you guys make is art. I mean, how many lives can be touched by the stuff oh, yeah. you guys do every day? It's, it's insane. Somebody had a really good idea. You know, the days, like how many days since an accident? Yes. They said we should do one of those. Since Barry's had an accident. How many days since we've broken a tool? I said it'd never get off zero. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it'd never get off zero, man. All good. When you're good at something, keep doing it. That's right. Yeah. No, it's great. Hey. Dude, shit. yo, we're like in Texas, man. I know, isn't it crazy? Isn't that crazy? It's cra Dude, I've been here. You what? own a house. Your wife and your daughter are like right down over there, man. Twelve miles away. It's so yeah, good. it's crazy. Also, only yeah. a two-hour drive. It's only been 186 every day since I've been here. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> okay. Dude, don't Welcome complain, man. I was saying it would. You know, if you look at NorCal, right? NorCal, we got hot, and it's hot during the day. But nighttime, it just does not cool off. Mm. It does not cool yeah. off. That's it's the difference. Good. But everything else, I love. It'll now, cool down now that so I love it. I led him into, hey, we're in Texas. You know what I mean? Like, yay! And then this freaking guy just starts complaining. Yeah, you know what I mean? Heat. Like the heat, dude. The typical heat. California. We're in yeah, Texas, right? man. Right? No, I hate exactly. not paying taxes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. I know. And now there, there's too many good things. Can you just go into a, a store and buy a gun, or do I have to still fill paperwork out? Yeah, the gas station. Where the gas yeah. station. <laughs> you don't even have to go that far. Buckies. I'll sell you a gun right now. Buck, yeah. <laughs> Got three on me right now. He's like, come behind the heller. Like, yeah. let's go. Uh, you know get you hooked up. S sneak but, it. Sneak it in. What's, what's, cra uh -oh. what's, what's crazy for me is like this guy, <laughs> like we've known each other for what? Oh, 20 something 20 years. Yeah. Crazy. Easy. So Easy. a lot of a lot of the stories that I've told in like the videos and stuff, uh, he's actually in those stories. And uh, back in the day when Dude. I when I was running Neji Precision and I was Neji. like all by myself Dave running those Neji. machines. Yeah. I know. Oh, man. Come meet Titans of CNC at Emo 2023 in Hanover, Germany. The dates and times are right there. I can't wait to see you guys. Boom. I remember I remember coming in and you were you would uh, and we first met and you had told me kind of your journey. And yeah. uh, it started at a place called Zendola's, I think, in Sunnyvale. And I go, I remember calling on that place. Like, uh, Obviously, I never saw you there. But uh, yeah, then c going up to Grass Valley Colfax. And uh, I think that had to have been 02, 03. Yeah, I, like I started that. there like in, I think, 2001. 01, yeah. Know? And that's why I moved to Roseville, 01. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back in the day, and they had they had no CNC equipment. They had only manuals. They manuals. did all the contract workers. So they yep. had a bunch of guys just contract working. Uh, Jeff Weaver was one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember Jeff was uh, Jeff was uh, Jeff was your guy. He's my guy, man. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a crazy story, right that's there. That's another one. But it was cool to get to meet him. Yeah, he came over here. Oh, yeah. very nice. Yeah, very he nice. came over. Here. He owns a house. Remember this? He's the one oh, in yeah. McKinney, right? Yep. McKinney, super yeah. good and he's in the comments sometimes like oh nice you know he's always like right there like just putting crazy comments he was a good dude i know very good dude yeah but those i mean that that was uh i think what was your first you bought a vf2 to start yeah. via SS i think it was vf vf1 one yeah and then because you kind of had to get some vf2 ss's right like the vf3 mini mill mini mills the uh SL twenty. Yep. 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 So turn that yeah, place into a, a into a into a beautiful shop. Yeah. yeah. Well, they they went they went from just making everything on a manual machine mm -hmm. and literally knew nothing about CNC. They were losing their work. There's losing. They weren't making any money. And then it was like, hey, Titan. Like I walked in and they were just like, do you know CNC? Like, do you? I was like, yep. I know CNC, <laughs> so you can program. Absolutely, you know. Yeah. Show me your parts, and I was looking at all the coherent parts back oh, then. Oh yeah, big, uh, big. Co coherent lasers, and yep. I was like, oh yeah, boom, boom, and they were like, oh, we're taking. This takes forty-five minutes. I was like, ah, oh, it should be like thirteen minutes. <laughs> yeah, <you're laughs> ten right. minutes, right. you know, and stuff, and yeah, I got the job and just started like hustling, and I used to like literally. Like there would be contract workers and I'd be the only CNC guy. And then I would be at the machine 
And then I'd be like fixturing and doing all these different things and stuff. And then uh, Dave, the owner, would always be like, hey, don't give the service, don't give the sales guys your time because like we want, like we need you to just be head down working, working, working. But I'd have all my machines running. You know what I mean? And then he, he would come time. in. Dave wouldn't be around. I'd like invite him in. Yep. I'd bring him over to the, the machine. I'd be like, oh, check out this fixture I just made. I'm running all these parts and this and this. And I just like somebody that had knowledge of the industry where we could just talk shop. And that's what I always loved about you, man. You were always like a fan. Like you were always yeah. just like so good. I enjoy it. Right. Yeah. Well, you, you, right. In sales, you don't, I would never, I never wanted to be a salesman. I just wanted to be a guy that was, you know, digging what he did every day. And, and what that was, was seeing guys like you guys. I mean, all three of y'all, I didn't know you guys, of course, come before I came here, but seeing what you've done since I've come here, it's insane. And that's what I saw in him and so many other customers. But I, I told this story once, right? Maybe more than, way more than once, but, you know, I came into Titans and, and I, I, I was like, what is this guy doing? You know, he would have bought like maybe two or three machines at that point. It was the SS's though. I think they had like an 833, you know, cutting feed rate at the time. Let's go. And you were like going like 600 before yeah. adaptive, before software, before anything, before the tools were as good as they are today. And I, I just I just was like, this is insane. Insane. Yeah. yeah. I was like, people, people always Certainly. like they talk about running fast and stuff, but I made that the whole mentality. Yep. Time is money. Like Time if the is part money. is 40, 40 minutes, let's drop it in half. If yep. it's 30 minutes, let's drop it in half. And then later on when I went out on my own, it it's was true. the same philosophy. It's yep. like going to every single customer and saying, look, this is how everybody else runs. This is how we run. This is why we will save you money. And this is how I will guarantee it. And that mentality. Completely remember you know, all that. I would do videos on YouTube and stuff and people would be like, you can't do that. And I'll be like, Baloney. SpaceX isn't complaining. <laughs> yeah, you know what correct. I mean? Like, they're not like, hey, you're correct. running too fast, you know? Correct. So, well, yeah. like when you guys started, right? What did you, what were you running feed weight right wise back in the day in, in material? Back then, I wasn't running near that fast. Right. One or 200 inches a minute. One to 200. But, you know, as time went on, we all, like, that's what sets us apart in this industry is that we've always tried to get better and faster and yep. use new technology, new software, all that stuff. So, Throughout my career, you know, I've always gotten faster and faster, including <laughs> since I came here. Yeah. Yeah. Two thousand inches a minute. That's yeah. what I like. I, back in the day, when we were doing the TV show, I was trying to sell Haas on that man. You know, it's like yeah. they're selling so many machines. I was like, man, there are so many people in the grind right now, and they just don't know what they don't know. Exactly. Like, you got to make videos, man. And at that time, nobody nobody believed it. You know no, what I mean? no, they were like, "What do you mean?" It, remember, well, people kept their trade secrets. They didn't want to leave, leave their, oh, yeah. you know, let their uh, let their secrets out. That was job security back in the day. Yeah. I think today it's become, you know, doing demos, going into a shop, and 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 bringing maybe a, a, another customer into a Titans or you know whoever I went to go call in. People were way more acceptable these days than they were twenty years ago. Way yeah. more. That was job security. I know when we were talking, we were talking about videos, and you were talking about like your step downs when, you know, going through like full slotting and stuff. Oh, and yeah. you used to watch the videos too. Yep. Yeah. First time I saw that video, I knew it had to be fake, man. <laughs> because you know, throughout my whole career, I was always doing fifty thousand step downs if I was full slotting. And then I saw that video and I was like, there's no way that that was real. It was like three times diameter, 45 degree <laughs> ramp. I was like, no, oh, man, that was, that was movie magic. Uh, so good. But movie that's what I, magic. I, I always tell people how, how funny it was my second week here because I was like, Titan, what was up with that video, man? I know that that couldn't have been real. And he was like, oh, you don't think that that was real? Get a piece of steel and meet me at the horizontal. Let's go. <laughs> like, yep, converted me. Yeah, on that but day. even even that. I mean, that was one of the most. We put a camera on it. That was one of the most genuine videos ever. And it was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. You do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like set it. it up there. And here's the tool. And here's the parameters. And here's <laughs> this. And and he hit that start button. And it was just like. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the it first time crazy. I was on that horizontal, there were a bunch of chips from that in there. And I was like, what tool made these chips? <laughs> these oh, blue like, was this some weird face mill I've never <laughs> seen before? He's like, oh, no, that was an end mill. I was like, <laughs> Boom. Well, these chips are a quarter inch thick. Oh, I remember dang. you texting me after that and was like, hey, you remember how we always thought that those might be fake? Like, yeah, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, a, yeah. Oh, yeah, because you guys, right? Yeah, he was still at General Atomics when okay. I started here. For yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that was that was the whole thing 
with these guys is like he came from General Atomics. He and I, like I, I went out to the internet. I was just like best five axis machinist like this and this. And I got like 300 resumes. And that's why CNC expert is so awesome because it's like, what can you actually make? So I'm like, I'm not going to read all these resumes and stuff. Oh, and, then, man. and then I saw his and his was actually like pretty cool because it had pictures in it. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody puts pictures, you know, Never him standing it. by a fire truck, him standing on different hmm. parts that he had made and stuff. And then I contacted him and I was like, oh, General Atomics, like Reaper drones, all that stuff. So I was like, oh, he's, he does big things. But I was like, hey, can you send me some parts? And I was like, I promise, like it'll be between me and you. <laughs> like I won't show anybody, I won't put it on camera. And like he sent me some parts. I was like, oh, this guy's legit. You know? Well, that's it. Uh, we were talking a, a little bit earlier, right? I mean, that the the fact that how many resumes that I talked to from owners that came in and, oh, yeah, I could do this, 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 and this resume looks crazy. Okay, go program me something on that machine right there. And they are like, oh, oh I've yeah. never run this control oh, yeah. before. Like, resumes are the worst the thing, worst. especially in the machining business. Right. And me and Jesse were both on the interview team at General Atomics. So, so you saw it first. For out of every hundred resumes, we find maybe two people that actually could oh. do what they said it's crazy like it, the craziest thing is when you actually handle like you go into an interview this guy's got 35 40 we did one in 40 years experience oh I, I go in i'm like dude i've got 15 years <laughs> like why am i interviewing this dude you go in just hand them a semi-complex part and you hand it to them say any machine any process you want just tell me how you would do it couldn't do it. Wow. Oh, yeah. it's like, what have you been doing for 40 the last 40 years? years. Yeah. yeah we, had, crazy. we had a guy but, that had... But, but that comes from the best machinist in the history of the world. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? if, you, if you literally Google the best machinist in the world, Jesse comes up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that crazy? That's crazy. Uh, it's even worse that that was my fault. <laughs> right, right. But, you led to that. The was, only was, day you told the truth. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so Barry, so Barry worked here oh, first, damn it. and then we were hiring again. And I'm like, at, at this time we're teaching the industry, so I'm like, best of the best, yeah, like best of the best. And then we'll take you and make you great tur. Yeah. But like, we got to start at a high level. He said, "Hey, best best machinist I ever worked with was this guy Jesse, and he's like a big fan. He watches your videos." And I was like, "Would he move to Texas?" And he's like, "He just might, you know." <laughs> Good call, brother. I know. Good call. Did it take a lot of convincing? No, it didn't. Right? No. <laughs> Get out of Mississippi. I, he, I had COVID when he came for the, he drove all the way down here. I had COVID and he thought he was getting out of it. I was like, dude, we're going <laughs> to sit outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sit outside, but like, we're going on. We're going to. If you're the greatest, oh, I'll, I was, I'll stand you know I mean? six feet apart. Yeah, I was so mad because when Barry had an interview with him, I was like, he's like, oh talked to titan for two hours last night and i was like dude get out of here he's facetiming me showing me the lake and all this stuff i was like dude get out of here oh. then he's coming to an interview and he's like i was like dude get a picture with him like yeah, at least I, do that for uh, me he's like i just want to see if he's really as big as yeah. he looks on camera i was like every video he goes he's like bigger than everybody and i'm like i'm sick I'm like i want to see i know how big you are so barry's, like, barry's the big boy <laughs> we'll use you as the uh average yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but at least funny. we knew it wasn't like the tom cruise and Syndrome thing where you were like five, <laughs> Six, five, five foot five. three and yeah. just surround yourself yeah. with people that are four foot exactly. two like chris <laughs> looks like he's <laughs> 6 five on, on camera super good awesome. but now yeah. now you're down here with your beautiful wife yeah. and baby boy and yeah. all good and they were doing a video <clears> and he's like oh best machinist in the world he jokes about it but then the algorithm or ai or whatever like picks it out and actually now when you google that oh get out it <laughs> yeah. pops him it's like up. that video what? I know. yeah <laughs> dang <laughs> so good hey that's Man. not bad you should be in the dictionary yeah it's like one of those things it's like oh that's a good compliment to have it's like no it's not because you know how machinists are yeah you know? everybody's like well you're not better than me so <laughs> right every time he introduces me like that they're sitting there like yeah, screw yeah, that yeah. guy. You know? <laughs> I know, I know. He don't know anything. You can't, you can't <laughs> do what I do. They're, they're thinking the same thing I thought when I first met you. <laughs> Sorry, who's this guy jokes, that can't yeah. even speak English? I know he ain't a good machinist. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's, I don't think it's fair, oh, too, because oh, when, when we started making videos, like I'd make aluminum parts and everybody would just tear me down. Yeah. And then, then I, I was like, I can't, I can't show you all the aerospace stuff that we run. But then I started running titanium and Inconel and Monel and all these harder things. And, and slowly it like diminished. 
and then he comes over here with an aluminum pit bull. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody says anything. You know what I mean? Nobody's like, oh, make that out of titanium. Well, that's, yeah. you know, it's all about levels, Titan. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we, we like to teach people that are at the beginning of their career, like Jesse and you know, other right. people, too. Right. You still got a lot of room to grow. It's yeah, all good. Exactly. Man. But That's what's I, good about the videos, though. I had a guy. He was up in uh, Auburn, California. Great little shop near where we were at. And uh, he got a titanium job and never had cut titanium before. He hadn't watched many of the videos. He hadn't seen, you know, what you were doing. And the first thing he said to me goes, first place I went to was Titans. To see what, how to, what tools to use, how to set this up. And I said, that is awesome right there. Cause, Crazy, right? Yeah, people, I mean, they, they got to know. Look at that thing right there. That's actually what That's I did with the $12 million forging that we were talking about. Monel K, uh, K400. Hello. I'd never machined it before in my life. First thing I did is I, well, I mm. think I Googled it, but your video popped up and I watched every Monel video you had that to get a good base point. It's, and guess what kind of tools how we how, ended up using? How much Monel? <laughs> Kenna metal. Kenna metal. Kenna metal. <laughs> no way. How much? Uh, of course. That material was a crazy price on that one, right? Yeah, just twelve million dollars. Twelve million dollars just for the raw material. Wait, yeah. wait. How big was this? Yeah. Oh, you... it was massive. Massive part. Yeah. Twelve yeah. million. Yeah, it was yeah. three pieces. Holy smokes, that's insane. Yeah. Took six months, I think, to make it. So it was like, don't scrap that. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't scrap that. You know, I, when I started doing like, like we would do the Monel parts for like these aerospace rocket companies and. First time engineers started talking to me about it. They're like, you want to do like, you know, A286 or you want to do Monel? And then I was like, just pretending like I knew what any of it was. Yeah, right, you know? right, right. And <laughs> fake it till you make then they, it. Then they, then exactly they, right. yeah, then they put Inconel 718 and Solution Treat, all that. And I was like, hmm, okay. But then it's just like you knock them off and knock them off. So then later on, we're doing YouTube videos and people are like, oh, you're just running aluminum. And I'm like, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll show make, you. We're gonna make some Monel parts. Like nobody's ever like done videos on machining Monel, you know. And and uh, and the videos didn't do good. And really? I and I was just the like early what? early early ones. Yeah, the videos yeah. the videos didn't do good. And I was I was like super disappointed. But then now where I am now, I understand because nobody knew what it was. Right. So you're like, oh, I'm gonna machine this part out of Monel, but people are like, I'd rather watch aluminum or steel or titanium, right? Because that was like more popular. Right. You know, nobody, that, nobody, normal machinists just weren't running that kind of stuff. No, you know? no, no. But maybe now, up in Seattle, you had your yeah. Boeing stuff, but not yeah. not where we were at. Or yeah. not, you know, again, a lot of aluminum out there. Yeah, a lot of aluminum. Yeah. The uh, you were talking about mm -hmm. Auburn, California, and like I think that's like a cool thing that I've told these guys is that. Dude, this guy is one of the reasons I'm even here. I started my shop up there in Auburn in the Grass Valley area and stuff. And uh, mm. when I was working at Nagy Precision, they, like he would come over all the time. We'd talk, we'd talk, we'd talk. He'd always go and like, you'd go tell everybody about yeah. it, go talk to Bill Selway and all that and stuff. And then, yeah, one day I just was like, look, I'm gonna go out on my own. I'm gonna like quote four machines. Four boom, machines. Boom, boom. He came to me with four, not just yeah. one. I need one <laughs> to stop. No, it, it was four. Four. Yeah. Right off the bat. Four. Yeah. I think it's. But like, it made I, sense. You, you, I mean, one. What are you going to do with one? Right. You know, yeah. really. We we had a plan in place. I think I think it's a good lesson for like anybody that when you go through hard times in life, there's like mm -hmm. a lot of times it's it's exactly what you had to go through to be qualified to do something great to her. Completely so like every time you go through something, you should be thinking about how, like, okay, I'm going through this valley right now, but like, why am I here? And like, what can we achieve here? And like, like what's the path and yep. stuff? So yep. I have never like really talked to you guys about it. I, I might've mentioned it before, but like, I had a contract with this guy, Dave, and uh, for four years, man, and it was like, I built that whole shop and everything. And at the end, his son didn't want any part of it. And he was like, hey, and there's no way. I used to be in prison. I can't have my own shop. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, I was like, man, this is like my opportunity. And he's like, Titan, after four years, I'm literally going to move to Texas. He's going to move to Texas. And this will be your shop. You just send me a check and this will be your shop. So for four years, my wife told me to quit because he would like, 
I just go through all these things, man. I'd be so bummed out. But I was like, no, this is my only shot to have a company. I mean, somebody like me, like getting $50,000 for a machine. Put that carrot out like, in front of you. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, he's always, there's times I like went to drive away and he jumps in front of the car and stuff. And like, it was just like a crazy situation. But I was like, man, this is my opportunity. One day he's going to leave and like, it'll be my shop and stuff. And then yeah, one day we had dinner and he said, hey, I thought he was like sick or something. I was actually worried about him. And then he's like, hey, Titan, I know we had the contract. I know this and you've done a phenomenal job. And like, this is like, you know, none of this would happen without you. But um, I found the buyer for the company and basically went after four years of telling me it was going to be my shop. He ended up like finding a buyer and then like and then I, I used to, I was trying to get raises for my guys and trying to like, you know, take care of them. And he was like jeering everything down and, and putting handcuffs on me to do it. And then like the very next day after he told me, he went in and gave everybody raises. Oh, and man. I just was like, oh, what? Yeah, this, this is garbage. But you know, man. if it wasn't for those four years, there's probably a lot exactly. of stuff that you wouldn't have learned. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. there was a shop before that we know that I yeah. helped build and, and do different things. And it was like, I had to learn electrical and Each step. air and and customer that I had to learn all those things and yep. stuff. Well, not only learning it, the work ethic that you learn yeah. doing that, yeah. you know, you're Heck working a yeah. lot harder to make it work. Heck you know? yeah. And right. You guys know this. I always used to say this to guys that we, you you can, you knew the guys that would go into a shop that had talent. You knew the guys that would probably at some point uh, go off and do their own thing. But before they did that, I would always say, you know, you can't just stay here. You gotta, you gotta float around. You gotta that's hit true. shop and shop yep. and sh you gotta. Unfortunately, that's a little bit of a uh, issue with our industry, but it is. It, it gets you so much more expertise. You learn so much more from different shops, different people you work with, different materials you cut. And after three, four, five shops, you like you're well rounded. Oh, but yeah. so, like you said, without doing any of that, without having those experiences, you yeah. wouldn't be where you are. I, I completely yeah. agree. Because when I met you, you were. You're like rocking, oh man, <laughs> moving. He I mean, I, I was like, inches a minute though. I no, was not like, yet. No, that was still uh, Barry's claim. <laughs> I, I just love machining. If you run, yeah, if you run slow, you're depressed. If you run, if you get after it and like you make money and like you're like making things happen, man. There's just something that happens where you just you love life, man. Mm. And I've just always been that guy. Yeah. You know, I love teaching people and all of it and stuff. But it's the greatest at industry. That, at that point of the Dave, like. I literally called that guy. Yeah, me. Like I've said it in the past, but like I called that guy and I said, I said, hey, can we meet behind Jack in the Box? Like yeah. down in Rockland. <laughs> and what was the point behind Jack in the Box? Well, we, I think, I think I know, but we, you just yeah. want to be like incognito. Well, I know that like there's like people <laughs> going down the street and I was just like, I just wanted to like meet you. I was in ready private. to take a lunch and, and yeah. it's like, no, <laughs> it's all good. I just wanted to meet you in private. I had already left. Like yeah, I yeah. already made the right. the decisions and stuff, you know, right. but it's like, I just wanted to like, I just had this vision to, to Bring go out it. on my own. And I had, and he's like, Oh, so how much money do you have? And as I roll out, I want four machines. Right. And then <laughs> right. what did I say? Nothing. I got a dollar 50. But I said, in the, he said nothing. He goes, I ain't got anything. And I said, we'll figure it out. We'll, yeah. we'll make it happen. And, and we did. Yeah. I just really looked at customers and I was trying to sell myself to customers and stuff. And uh, that's when the whole Jeff thing happened, you know, because it's like, I'm like trying to like talk to these guys yep. and tell them, hey, you have, you know, 30, $30 million worth of manufacturing. You have this and this. Like if you invest in me, then I will help lower that. And everybody's yep. like, oh, we definitely want to work with you, but we're not going to invest in you. Right. You know, and it was much, it was way harder, man. People, people like, they get, they well, talk a lot, but like, Haas to put denied their money, you at yeah. first, right? I mean, yeah. Haas didn't so even give you credit. It was $300,000 300 I was trying to get. And then Haas said no. And then, which uh, startup, 300 grand, they're like, yeah, no, we, we yeah. don't know this guy. We're not yeah. going to take a flyer. He was incarcerated. Yeah. five years ago or yeah. whatever, it, whatever was, it was, you know, and it's like, yeah, but I'm hungry. You right. Know? I'm hungry. <laughs> exactly. But at the end of the day, like we had plan B, this guy came back to me we had and plan he's B. like, Hey, uh, Bill wants to talk to you. And then you went, you had some talks behind the scene, huh? Yep. Yep. No, I did. I did. I said, you know, it's, it's worth taking 
this shot, I said, just like I'd said earlier, you know, I'd never seen anybody like this before. I hadn't seen the speed. I hadn't seen somebody calculate the numbers like he calculated. And I understood after he opened the shop what four machines meant, you know, how many I can run them three shifts at, at so many dollars per hour at so many hours per day. That equals this. That's my payment. Then the rest is it, he had it down. Nobody was thinking like that. I mean, I'd go into a shop and it was it was my customers are the best people on the planet. But it, back in those days, it was a struggle for guys to figure out how to get a shop going. And, and you know, it's a big investment, right? I mean, it ain't just the machines and you got to tool up the machines and you got to get software. You got to get coolant. You got to it's a lot of money. So he had a plan and the plan and back you, then was it. You have rent and like rent. you have electrical. A lease. So it's like, and you got electrical, you have all this. So it's like, is that made with one machine or right. two machines? I'm not telling <laughs> people, other people to like go buy a bunch of machines, but it's, <clears throat> it's the truth. It's like, it is. you need to have enough machines to make enough per hour. And then you need to stack it and stack it and run it. So I put the bed in the shop and did everything. Yeah. But before we even get there, like, I don't want to like miss the point of telling you guys like, dude, these guys, yeah. Like you can say it. I don't, I don't want to say it. But so like, when when I had that conversation with Bill and I told him, you know, hey, let's 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 take care of this guy. I think this guy, you know, is going to be a, a, a player in the industry. He's got what it takes. And uh, and yeah, Bill called you. He said, OK, give me his number. And so Bill called him. Bill Selway was a great, great guy. One uh, of the, the godfather I, of industry, icons. man. Love yeah. that guy. Love yeah. him. Love him. Love him. God rest his soul. Yeah, um, yeah great guy. And uh, he called you. And I think what he, he said, yeah, he's he, like, what's your plan? He's like, what's what's your plan? I yeah. said, I got a list of 25 customers. You can call each one of them. They're all going to give me work. This is the companies that I built. I'm going to start with four machines, two SSs, yep. and then two SL10s, one with a bar feeder. And I just, I had it systematic. And this is what we're going to do. And this is the customers. And and he said, all right. That's I'm gonna, crazy. I haven't done this in like nine years or something. And I'm going to like personally gu guarantee your loan yep. to the bank. So if you can't make the payment, that's that's on me. Yep. You know. Yep. Yep. And he's like, "Where do I drop off the machines?" Isn't that crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> crazy. Who, who does that? No. But that's this industry. That, and that is, and that's yeah. you know the, the nice thing about being with a mom and pop shop. You know, Bill. Bill was it. You know, you had an issue with service. You had an issue that you needed to you know uh, address. You could call the owner. You ain't doing that with a lot of people back then no. even yeah it's fantastic and it's like you said you know as soon as you walk into a shop you can tell the people that have talent yep like general atomics within the first few days i was there i already knew exactly who each of the guys were i was going to say that earlier it's funny because i remember that conversation <laughs> like barry had been there a week and he's like so I've been watching everybody and let me see if I got this right. And he's just like, you, you are for this, this, and this, this guy does this, this, this guy does this, this. Does that sound about right? And I was like, yeah, you had it broken down, <laughs> Pretty broken down. Yeah. But it oh. is, you know, right. I mean, you, and you know that, you know, the guys that are, that are going to be at, at that high level that want more, that are staying late and learning more. And they, and I had a guy that was in, uh, El Dorado Hills, great guy. And it's the first time I saw adapt high speed machining. And uh, he's like, I got this five flute high helix end mill and I'm gonna take it in this 4130 material and just rip through it. And it was like 26 minutes, you know, cycle time. And he got it down to like 11 minutes and the owner's just grinning eye to eye. But you, he didn't know that if he didn't go home and learn like what was going on, what were the new techniques coming out. And, and that's what you do when you when you love what yeah. you do. Me and Jesse yeah. laugh because we struggled for a long time back in the beginning before we had Titan, you know, teach us everything. But uh, it's like <laughs> there, there was there was so little information out there yeah. about, you know, how how high can I raise my surface footage if I'm, you know, adaptive milling and and that's how i found the channel yeah you know, yeah I, I still remember the exact spot in the apartment that i was sitting in memphis when i found the uh manufacturing speech video and nice because like, i was that's exactly what i was trying to learn as i was like wanting to learn high speed machining and all this and nobody i, I had around me had ever done it or yep. some the closest i got is a guy said yeah we tried that it didn't work so we don't <laughs> we don't mess with it right that's the closest i got right so i was trying to find anything on the internet that i could find and there of course at the time there was very little yeah and i came across titan's video and it's like so funny because everything you said in that video is exactly what i had felt exactly what i've been saying 
for years, you know, and, and nobody around me Crazy. felt the same things. Like, why do you care about this so much? <laughs> right. your job? Like, yes. It's Two. break time. Quit talking to me about a 13 <laughs> fluid end mill. I'm like, but it's cool. Look at it. It is. You know, That's like, the whoa. greatest thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Two inches a minute has worked since 1980. Why would we yeah. change it right, now? Right. That's what I was thinking when you said 600 inches a minute way back then is like i remember first starting out in the shop watching guys run 1018 yeah at 2000 rpms 20 inches a minute 20 inches a 100 minute. thou depth of cut yep it's just like just, i remember walking up to the very first uh carbide bin old end mill stuff that we'd throw in and i'd picking them up every single end mill the first hundred thousands at the bottom would just ruin. <laughs> just and I remember shredded. thinking, I will never forget this because this is how ignorant I was. I picked up and I was like, why do I, they even put all these long, why <laughs> yeah, do they grind it so far back when you only use the end? That's so stupid. Then I go, oh, finishing. Yeah. But that's what so I thought. I was funny. like, it only was there for finishing. So funny. Mm -hmm. Hey, and I'm going to say, you know, he didn't lose. He, he, there were spindles that were lost during that 600 inch oh, per minute. Yeah. <laughs> right. There were some spindles lost yeah. in there. But I remember you even saying, you're like, dude, it's like five grand for a spindle. Exactly. If I got to they give you half it. back. Like, exactly. Six, six grand. Every once in a while, Core you go exchange. through a spindle. Yep. But the mentality yep. over weeks and months and years allows you to like be successful, fill up your shop with work and make money. So I was happily like, I like paid, that was I, nothing. I bought the spindles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A spindle and, every couple yeah. of years or whatever. Yeah, give me a break. Then we then we jumped up to, jumped up to the Toyota. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you had that four fifty. You know? Yeah, that four fifty horizontal. That was yeah. a beautiful machine. Yeah. It was actually a very nice machine. It's cranking titanium. Cranking time. Yeah. One one thing I want to say is though, like earlier we we talked about that whole journey and the three hundred thousand, but like. The Jeff thing. I just want to touch on Jeff, man, because Jeff, like you guys met him, but think about it. Like he he's he worked for me at the shop and I paid him, I don't know, it was twenty something dollars an hour as a general manager at the shop at the time. And and it was like he didn't even know CNC, but I paid him because he was trustworthy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like I, man, I would drive that guy crazy because I would just be like running like multiple machines and I'd be leaning down with all my parts all perfect and he'd be cranking handles. I'd be like, man, you're working hard, man. Like, <laughs> ooh, you know, and he'd, he'd, he'd like, but I'd always talk to him in the shop oh, while funny. I was running like these big fixture plates where I just had like all these parts just, you know, runtime, man. And like, but during that, he came to like love me and I loved him. And like, he was amazed at the things that he was seeing, uh, how like I'd set up, I'd have six machines running. You know what I mean? Because each one had an hour runtime. It's like, I don't need a bunch of guys. Like we're just running it. But the time when Bill said, hey, 300,000, like I'm gonna guarantee you four machines. Like, where do I drop it off? I still didn't have money. Right. And that's when Jeff right. came to me and he was just like, Titan, my parents both died. They left me $50,000 It's all the money I have in the world. And like, like I want to invest it in you. And I was just like, dude, I'm not going to take I mean, without money. that, I mean, you, yeah. I, know. I said no, I said no, and I kept trying, but I, nobody would like, nobody would give me an opportunity. Nobody would like help fund it. So I was like, okay, 50,000. And, and then I spent that like that. Of course, you know what I mean. And because then, he wants the best. And Give then, it, it then me. it was like another seventy-five thousand dollars, and then mm. it was like, you know, he took out seventy-five thousand from his house after that. His wife was going to divorce him, and uh, I just think it's That's like a crazy. cool thing because you guys met him mm -hmm. over here when he came to see the shop with his wife. She was going to divorce him over it. And now she prays for us all, all the time. <laughs> nice. And That's they great. live, they live in the beautiful house that they purchased with the money they got from the deal with Titans of CNC. That yeah, because you, know, you paid right? them back with dividends, right? Yeah. So yeah. we gave me a hundred twenty-five. We gave them six twenty-five back. Yeah, mm. I'd say that's a good deal. Yeah, that's not a bad investment. <laughs> but you think of that though. I mean, you you don't brush it off like you think of. That's all. This think of yourself. I've only got mm. $50,000 in the bank. Yep. That's all I've got. 
and I'm going to give it to somebody else. Yeah. So another person that That's could literally crazy. take it and leave right. could do anything. Who used to be in prison. You think of that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But you right. think of giving that amount of money to somebody else, the amount of faith that he must mm. have had. Was, well, and again, about. right, probably side by side with you all day, saw the effort, saw the work, saw what you did, just kind of like what I did. I, I I, would agree. I mean, if you're sitting in there, but it's so amazing, so generous to do that. It's crazy. That's probably the yeah. good reason why you are. Yeah, it's crazy. It's very good. And you know what? Guarantee he wouldn't have given that to you if he didn't see your work ethic. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's always telling me, like, you need to have your own shop. You know, and I think Keith Keith would say the same thing yep. and other people would say the same thing. Like you 100%. have to have your own shop. You know, you deserve to have your own shop. But when you have no money, you know, and that right. it's again, that's just a great inspiration to a lot of people. Like, you know, they'll be like, oh, if I had this and I had that, I could like I didn't have that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I had nothing, man. I was like I had fifteen hundred dollars child support. I was borrowing five dollars for gas to get to work while I was managing a company. You right. Know? Like I was struggling, but it's like I was relentless in it, you know. Yep. So it's like you, you can say what you want, <laughs> but it wasn't always like that. No. We, we like we worked hard, man, and and even like you look at CNC Expert now and and everything we're doing with CNC Expert, you know, and it's my license plate, but it was my license plate back in two thousand seven, and we used to talk about the magazine. No, like I, the mag I literally, yep. I would think about just out compete. All these companies would be like oh, Titan's going to go out of business and nobody can quote that low. And I'd be like making 40% profit on <laughs> all the parts and, and getting like all the work I wanted. Crushing. And it, and yeah. And then I'd just be like, man, they, they, they just can't comprehend what they don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't talk to anybody. They're yeah. not my friends. They, they're thinking because I underbid them that I'm actually lowballing. And I'm like, I'm making great money. They're just running at a snail's pace the way yeah, they always did. A minute. Yep. yep. You know what yep. I mean? And yep. then it's like, so the idea for CNC Expert, the idea, it was way back even before the economy dropped out. Yeah, like, like 05, 06. Yeah, at that time, it was like, hey, let's do a CNC Expert magazine. And all these trade magazines, they're like, people pay to be in them. And I was like, let's just do a magazine where we have crazy fixturing, crazy techniques, like, G codes, speeds, feeds, and just different types of materials. And this literally teach the trade through this. Right. And so it's like a machinist magazine. And I said earlier, right? People weren't willing to give those secrets out. Yeah. And you're like, no, this is yeah. what's going to lift the industry. I remember those conversations wholeheartedly 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, crazy. I, I always thought, like, man, how can you compete as a country if you yeah. don't have great education for uh. your kids? Manufacturing built this country. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing built it, and people don't even know what CNC is. Mm. Like you go to the mall and you ask, you know, eight out of like eight or nine out of ten, or ten out of ten people won't know, know what machining is or anything. And I'd it's say like, ninety-nine out of a hundred. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So ever since like I walked in, I'm like, I had no future. I had no option. I had no money. No education. Nothing. Didn't know what it was. And then you put me in front of a machine. I'm like, it literally changed my life. So. I've always had the attitude that, man, this is life changing for the right people. Yeah. So, like, we got to give it, it back. Yeah, you know? no, you're right. No, they're, they you you, give it back. And there's so many, right? They make, and, and this might be wrong to say, but, you know, they make college so important. But there's a lot of kids. I've sold so much to high schools. High school programs in California got a lot of funding for a few years that, that, that helped produce these great, great uh, machine shops inside of high schools. But these kids, not everybody's wired for college. You put, you show them a machine tool, yeah. and they have that aptitude, that 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 mechanical nature about them, and they are going to fall in love with it. And yeah. they, but they got to understand it. Yeah, I never went to college a single day in my life. I God never even you. took a tour of a campus it because shows. I knew it wasn't for me. <laughs> I missed that, yeah, Mister. <laughs> <laughs> Mister. Fourth generation machinist over yeah, here. Yeah, man. You yeah. know. Yep. But it's it is. Good, there's, there's so many kids that just they. Oh man, I got to go to. No, you don't. There's so many. This, yeah. this industry is insane. Yeah. And not that I'm not trying to say don't go to college, but I'm also saying there is so many good paths, and this can lead to such an amazing yeah. career, right? Yeah. I mean, and I like, for I, like all how, I like how you said you were talking about like, actually, you were talking the other day, and you were saying, you know, 
they'll look at trades and people and counselors and all that. They'll look at it like the people that can't get into college yep. are going right. into trades. And yet you look at Elon Musk and Elon Musk will be like, look, like designing and making products, like the design part is easy. Figuring out how to manufacture it efficiently yep. at a low cost. That is the difficult part. 100%. And one thing I learned from the beginning was if you can solve the right problems, you're going to make money. And that's why more and more people who design parts that are in business, they're getting into CNC machining. They're getting into yep. manufacturing. They're figuring out how to make their own parts. And and like by making your own parts, you can be control. You can control your own destiny and like do something. If you're paying other people, then you're screwed. Yep. So hundred percent. And there are there's a lot of young kids getting into this now. Yeah. There was a kid out in in Nevada, middle of nowhere. G2 machining. He bought him 17 years old, bought a mini mill from mm. me making, making Crazy. gun. Yeah. Making gun parts and just uh, like and, phenomenal. And people will say, you can't do that. Right. That, that machine is so expensive. Right. Like they don't, they don't scream about them buying a car for that much, That's but they'll be like, you shouldn't call. buy it. You sh shouldn't spend that money on a machine and stuff because yep. they just don't understand. But that kid, ends up going through it and like just building this crazy company. Yep. We had so many people like oh, back like in Stone. like 2018. Well, Stone's, yeah, what Stone's was crazy. Or? But I was just going to say like in 2018, a lot of people at IMTS, a lot of like young guys would come up and say like, hey, I started my company because mm -hmm. of the US. I got inspired and I was like, that's awesome. Well, I got two machines and stuff. And now those same guys were coming up to us during the summer, yep. you know, last summer, and they are like, hey, uh, I got 40 machines, you know, wow. I got 30 employees. I got like, it's crazy. And, and they're, man, they just went after it, mm -hmm. you know, inspired and the stone. I keep thinking he's like 15. He's like, what is he? 16, 17 now? Man, I don't know. He might be 18 by he, now. He's getting close. 18. Yeah. And he's like, just, did he just buy a BMW? Yeah. 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 Yeah, moved into like his 18. first shop. That is great. Yeah. He what? He's out of the garage now into his. Yeah. He's got his own got shop. His own he's building. got multiple CNCs. He has his, he had his own product at 15 years old. Crazy. He's selling his own product. God yeah. bless yeah. him. Yeah. Or like when we were at IMTS, there was that guy that had his little nine year old with him that I took yeah. a picture with. It was yeah. like super yeah, good. He programs EDMs and five what? axis mills, and it's like he, wait, he's nine. nine. Yeah, he's <laughs> like yeah, yeah, damn. Those, so good. Those Super are the best. Cool. Those are great stories. Yeah. The young kids and the garage stories. Guys that yeah. started in their garage. There was a guy down in in Stockton, George Cruz at GC Machine, sold him a tool room mill and a tool room lathe in his garage. He is now. I got. I think he's the biggest shop in Stockton, if not the local Bay Area. You know, uh, outside just the Bay Area. Thirty machines, thirty spindles, taking care of a ton of families, and just killed it. And those Crazy. garage stories are amazing because. Right. They get home from work. They just worked all day, eight, 10 hours, 12 hours, come home and they make more parts while they're at home eating dinner with their family. Nope. Switching parts out on the machine. <laughs> Grinding. Grinding. The work in and loving Grinding. it. Like you're, it's your your machine, man. Yeah. yeah. And it's stuff. fantastic. I want to give a I want to like say something about Stone. 15 years old. But you met his parents, man. Mm -hmm. His parents, no, his great. parents yeah. are like they're not machinists. They're not like from this industry. And yet. They, they're just so supportive, yeah. you know, and he's out there just working in the garage and doing his thing and stuff and like and building this company. But like like having the right parents and the mindset and the people around you is so important. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. So, yeah, yeah, super good. You well, know? think about that when the parents don't even know what this machine does and then he comes in with this part mm -hmm. and they're like, wait. Yeah. You made yeah. this out of what? You know? Yeah. You want me to buy a $25,000 machine <laughs> for what? Yeah. And now I need 5000 more to tool it? What? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. I don't and know. Then he quickly started making his own money. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it started, like, just doing all of That's that. Cool. What were you going to say? I was say, when I was 15 years old, I was still trying to play Nintendo and Sega Genesis. <laughs> and I wasn't worried about machining nothing. Oh, football, Super tech baseball, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Football yeah. and baseball, that's all it was in high school. No and doubt. it's like, hey, you're graduating. What are you going to do the rest of your life? Oh, I hadn't even thought about it. You know? <laughs> yeah, so correct. Right yeah. Correct. Yeah. I always, like, growing up in my dad's machine shop, I always said, I'll never be a machinist. And then when I graduated and had no skills and knew I wasn't going to college, it was like, uh oh. <laughs> I think I'll take that path. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. It was like when I saw Stone get that car, and I was like, that? Yeah. Boy, I just bought a beautiful BMW. <laughs> and it, is he 18? He's, he's about there. Yeah, he's roughly. There. And. 
but the but the first thought in my head was like, oh, did he should he have gone that big? You know what I mean? Like, should he have gone that big? But at the end of the day, there are people buying their kids who don't even work crazy cars. Oh, crazy. So if you actually think about it, I'm, I think it's so brilliant because at a young age, he's worked and worked and worked and put crazy time into that garage. And then he went and bought something that he loved with the money that he made on these CNC machines. And so it is a great. crazy life lesson. And people mm. can say, make a judgment or whatever, but it's like he went out there and put the work in. That's it. You know, to actually make that money yeah. and, and supply parts to his customers. You and, know? and now it's paying off. And, crazy. And think about that, right? We all know this. The people that you've worked around, the people that you've known that own businesses, we're the hardest workers on the planet. I mean, we are making stuff every day. The guys are staying at the shop late. They're, 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 they're on the weekends. It's what you have to do to be a successful owner of a shop oh, and yeah. if you want to succeed. My dad's shop, you know, when me and him first moved down here to Texas, we lived in his shop for like the first six months to a year. Wow. We just had a hot plate. You know, we'd cook catfish or nice. little, little pizza rolls and stuff nice. on it, man, and we were happy. Hell yeah. So, Hell yeah. yeah. People used to say kind of stuff like this, like, oh, I wish I, wish I owned the business so I, I didn't have to be up here and stuff. But the first shop I worked at, it didn't matter. Like I, I was running a water jet. We run seven days a week, 12 hour shifts. And I remember the owner coming up there. You you never knew. He would be giving people to her 11 o'clock at night, midnight. Mm. It's like he slept four hours a night. He was always about that business. Yep. And, yep. I, and since then, I was like, yeah, I don't think these people is correct. I think people that own the business can, because they were always like, why don't you go and spend that money? Go on vacation. Right. Go somewhere. Get out of here. And he would go somewhere but after about three days. He's like, I'm ready to get back to the shop. 100%. Cause, cause he's they, got stuff to do. They you know, live so. it and breathe it. They yeah. do. They That's do. That's the trade, man. It Best is the trade, trade in the world. And it's not, it's, it's hard, right? And we all know that it's not easy. The, what you guys make is art. It's out of crazy materials, but it is ultra, ultra rewarding. I mean, how many lives can be touched by the stuff oh, yeah. you guys do every day? It's, it's insane. I mean, yeah. no, nobody knows the stuff that we do. It, you guys do, not me. I'm just in sales. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, it touches everybody every day. Yeah. Cars, planes, yeah. medical equipment. This you know, whole unit right here wouldn't everything. be here. This table wouldn't be no, here. Like crazy. None of this. This is all machine. The rockets, the planes. The clothes we're wearing. The, every right. phone. Nothing exists without CNC machine. Crazy. And, you know, and it, you started like talking about like the speech I did and uh, that one speech. And I put up a graph and I thought that was like important because it's like when jobs started leaving and we started selling them out, you know, and, and you see the manufacturing jobs like mm. dropping down yep. a lot of these big big cities and stuff that now have like major problems you're you know, saying these, like pre-recession or uh, post-recession yeah yeah, like yeah. just things yeah, just yeah, in fell the last off a cliff. 30 years you yep. know since like they you know last 30 years and stuff but like as you see like everything kind of dropping manufacturing wise mm -hmm. you see prison mm. at the same angle Yep. prison population goes up like this what? you know what i mean like it's like a crazy graph and stuff and that's why back in the day like i i did the whole plan for the state uh, for chicago you know what i mean oh, like that was terrible yeah. man you, that was such a great plan i yeah. still have that uh, presentation on yeah. my phone it's yeah. like all these alphas want to want to do these small things but they don't want to share you know and it's like so we just came with a school at scale and like i was talking to big companies like billion dollar companies that were willing to bring work to chicago mm. but like you need real workforce correct like, not 30 people like thousands of people so this one school that we designed and stuff similar to what we did in san quentin prison like there could be like three thousand people in there mm. and like the budget i mean literally to like build it to do all of it with for like a year and a half or something would be like 60 million dollars $60 million, right? And you're not making anything off it. But the point is, that funds the whole thing, 100%. right? And then, dude, people are not dying, right? You know, yeah. not like people say like, oh, you know, Chicago or whatever, whatever city it is, like, this is how it is. And they see it as like a reality. But it's because nobody's doing it at scale. If you actually bring a, a legit plan mm. at scale, 
and show them how you're going to build a workforce and then show them the companies that guarantee that they'll give them the work. Why shouldn't we invest in something like that? Agreed. We're giving money to all these other countries yes. and putting money in all these other things. Give them a way to actually take care of themselves. You know, give them a, give them opportunities. You bring in the right plan into some place like Chicago, you literally would have all the mothers LA. just walk in the streets and they would be praying over those streets because they know like this is the first time we've been offered a real solution to the problem. There you go. That's yeah. at scale. And don't get me started now, I'm man. I'm telling you, right? <laughs> you know I mean? That is crazy. I don't think I ever heard about that uh, one. That is dude, all man. I'll show it to you. Yeah, man. you got to see it. Honestly, Because yeah. it was like hundreds of machines, yeah. right? And it was going to train thousands of people in a yeah. skilled trade and yeah. they, keep people out of prison, keep people out of gangs. Yeah. And the politicians were just like, oh, yeah, we'll use this to run on yeah, it and we'll run, never do it. It got all political and stuff. And they were they were talking to like these companies, like they're trying to get Nike and different people to come over to Chicago and, and to like manufacture in Chicago. But like, there's no workforce, right? There's no trained labor, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, I had, I had big companies saying like, Titan, we would literally would have so much work, but we can't find companies yep. big enough to yep. actually do it. So you could literally create a school and then have work come in also. So like part of it is education and then part of it is like, you're actually making parts to help fund the whole thing. Absolutely. And then you just get it on this engine, man. And then you just start putting it all over the place. Mm. You know? It's yeah, like cause you're right. It's not just Chicago, right? How many no. guys I say that, uh, Keith, I'd buy a machine for me if I had somebody to run it. Exactly. Like, no, yep. it exactly. happened all the time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's all crazy. the time. I know companies that have bought several five axis mills and then they just sit there because they don't can't find anybody mm -hmm. that can program it or run it. Mm -hmm. But now you have the craziest five axis curriculum yeah, yeah. that's made like created by the greatest CNC machine <laughs> on the planet. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, uh. do it. <laughs> so anybody can learn Love now. It. But that's the whole point. Like, if there was great education, like, we wouldn't have to do it. So, like, let's put out something that is truly great, make it free for everyone. And uh, sooner or later, they will, like, listen to us and uh, we'll, we'll make change across this whole country and world and make manufacturing famous, man. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Super Absolute. good. Absolutely. Yeah. Boom. Now, so good. Hit it. Absolutely. Love you guys, yeah. man. I love you, too, brother, with man. You guys Absolutely. All day. Watch out for that finger. Awesome, yeah. man. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, very Boom. good. All right. Excellent. We're out. Be oh, good. Wow.